It's time to talk MSU baseball with Mike Scarborough and Kendall Rogers of D1 Baseball. This is Batter Up. All right, I'm real excited. Uh, you guys have been clamming for some uh, weekly baseball content. Kendall Rogers and I go back 20 years, of course, with D1 Baseball. This is our first episode of the season. We're going to be here each and every week. And uh, thanks to attorney Kenneth P. Haynes for sponsoring these each and every week. And uh, we're going to go for about 15 to 20 minutes each week. And, and really, I think we're going to do midweek. So each week through the season, we'll be able to talk about yep. D1 Baseball's new rankings, how the weekend played out, midweek games, et cetera, and then the upcoming SEC slate, which LSU, looking at the schedule, boy, it's tough, particularly the first uh, five to six weeks. But um, Kendall Rogers, welcome in, man. Dude, it's good to be back. It's it's college baseball season. It actually looks like it will not be frigid this weekend, which is nice for a change. I kind of feel like opening weekend's always like uh, bitter cold. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's going to be a really fun season for LSU. You know, obviously coming off a national championship, um, you know, I think this team is going to be much different than last year's team, at least to start the season. I mean, last year's team, like going into the year, you're thinking, okay, this offense is going to be incredible. I don't think anybody really expected Paul to be who Paul Skeens was. But I feel like this team overall, Mike, is one of those clubs that has a lot of potential offensively, but may not be, you know, elite to start the year. But on the pitching side of things, assuming Gage jumps, that you know, is healthy and, and can pitch in the future, uh, I mean, I, I would love the depth of this pitching staff. And so I just think this LSU team has a different complexion, but I think the end result could be very similar. Well, we had him probably, I have to go back and look, uh, 20 to 30 minutes yesterday. And, of course, he's been coming out each week and talking to us. Yeah, Wide open scrimmages for everybody to go out and view. Uh, I've looked over at Alex Box on the way to the PMAC, and they've had some really nice crowds for all throughout the leading up to this weekend. And um, But uh, he's saying all the right things about we're not yep. repeating. They're not taking the flag down. If we don't uh, defend, there's no defending. This is a new team. And, and he's right. I mean, look what all they've lost. I mean, those are guys that are once in a lifetime guys. To have one of them is a lifetime guy. To have multiple on them that you had on last year's yeah. team with Cruz and Skeens is phenomenal. And, and like you said, this is the complexion of this team uh, is totally different. Of course, uh, first pitch, 2 p.m., um, VMI, then Central Arkansas. Uh, taking a little heat from the LSU fans because he's got first pitch at 2 p.m. on Friday, 2 p.m. on Monday. Uh, but, uh, you know, like you said, you, usually when he schedules these, um, typically yeah. it's really frigid on Friday night. Uh, I think it was in the low 40s last year, opening weekend. And so that's why he's doing it. And, of course, there's also some bad weather that could be on the horizon. So, uh, Kendall, you got LSU uh, where in the D1 baseball? I think most people kind of agree with what you've got, but you've got Wake, uh, Florida, Arkansas, yeah, then yeah. LSU. Yeah, so, I mean, you, you really, for me, like LSU, Arkansas, and Florida are interchangeable. You know, personally, at this point, I probably I, I think Florida – I don't know, man. Like, I, I'd probably have them behind Arkansas and LSU in my personal rankings, just me. Uh, I just think, you know, Arkansas and LSU, to me, are very similar. I, I think if you look at those teams from a pitching standpoint, both are going to be really deep and really talented on the mound. Uh, I think when you look at Arkansas's weekend rotation, it ought to be very good. Uh, you know, Hagan Smith on the front of the rotation will be one of the best arms in college baseball this year. You know, Brady Tigert, who LSU fans are very well aware of uh, as, a, you know, a, a former All-American closer, you know, he'll be in the rotation. They added, uh, you know, Texas Tech's Friday night guy, Mesa Molina, is their Sunday guy. So when you look at Arkansas, uh, when you look at, you know, LSU this year with, with Thatcher and, you know, Luke Coleman, who I've heard has been terrific uh, early this spring, and, of course, you know, Gage Jump and guys like Cam Johnson – uh, you know, LSU is going to be a really good team. And, and the thing that I think is really cool about this club, it kind of gives – it frankly kind of takes me behind the curtain and gives me an idea how good this team can be is, you know, when I was talking to Jay and, and Nate Yeski at the end of the fall, uh, we were talking about, you know, Cam Johnson. And it was kind of like, hey, like where, like where does he fit in the equation, right? Because he, you know, he's up to 98, 99 with his fastball. He's got nasty stuff. But the thing about it is they're like, hey, you know what? He's ultra-talented. But, you know, we're not going to just throw him to the wolves. Like, we're going to kind of work him in to certain roles. We're going to work him into a, a role where he might be stressed a little bit. So when you have a premier talent like that and you have a pitching staff deep enough to where you can just work him in, that gives me an idea you're going to have a really good team and certainly a, an elite pitching staff. Well, heard on Friday, uh, mm -hmm. Pullman on Saturday, and then he left it up in the air for what 
he would do on Sunday and Monday. You mentioned Gabe jump, Gage jump, um, Jake Brown. A lot of people are excited about him. Um, and, um, you mentioned yeah. Cam Johnson, but, um, I mean, it, it's crazy. You've got, uh, 10 left-handers on this roster. Uh, you remember year one and, and yeah. <laughs> Miss. and well, they have like one or two lefties left at most. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it was bad. And, um, it, it's, you know, look, it's one of these deals now with, with the portal. And, um, if you have coaching changes and, and who you can bring in and, and what, what you can attract yeah. in a program like LSU, it's just, um, it, baseball. Look, we've seen multiple sports at LSU, uh, do fantastically, uh, in the portal. Um, we'll see if Brian Kelly can get some defensive linemen, uh, in Bay. but, um, yeah. You know, back to this, uh, when you look at LSU's schedule and the way it shakes out and particularly the way the uh, the, the start of the uh, SEC slate and, and the way it transitions for LSU from week to week, do you think they, they've got uh, a, a, a normal SEC schedule or do you like the way it sits for them? Because I, I, it looks really tough to me. Yeah, the the middle part of it is brutal. I mean, we're talking to Jay about this in the, whenever the schedule came out, but you think about, you know, Florida, Arkansas, Vandy, Tennessee, back to back to back to back. I mean, dude, you will not find a tougher stretch in college baseball. That's what, uh, number number two, number three, like number six, and number ten, all in back to back to back to back weeks. So, uh, yeah, I don't think the schedule makers really did them any favors. The thing about it, though, when you look at the SEC – is this league is so good now and it's going to continue to get only better with Texas and Oklahoma coming in the conference. But, you know, th th this may end up being like commonplace to where your schedule looks this tough because the league is that good. Uh, but, yeah, get, getting those four teams, you know, starting with the, the weekend of March 22nd, 23rd, 24th, all the way through the middle of April. So LSU is facing teams like that for literally almost an entire month. Uh, that That's brutal. Well, and here's the other part of it. When you look at all – heck, just look at your top ten. Yeah. Um, you know, I was listening to your cohort, Mark Etheridge, uh, I guess uh, the week after y'all put out your preseason top 25, mm -hmm. and he argued that there probably should be a couple of more SEC teams in the top 25. Yeah. But my question is, looking at it, um, is there a chance at the end of the year where all these teams have – you know, whether it's Florida and and, and – mm -hmm somebody gets uh, only gets one out of three or gets swept, you know, is there going to be a, a, a real log jam of teams with a lot more losses than you're typically used to seeing? And a lot of people are going to be looking yeah. at the SEC and, and, and want to judge on, on, on just one losses and uh, some top 10 teams maybe going somewhere and getting swept. Um, I, yeah. I don't know if that's going to mean a whole lot when it comes to NCAA regional and super time. Yeah, no, I don't think it's going to mean a ton. And and I think what we could have is one of those years. I want to say – I can't remember if it was – I think it was Vandy's second national championship. I want to say they finished like six or something in the SEC that year and then won the national championship. So I think this is one of those years where, you know, you know you're going to have a game separating or a game and a half separating two from seven. And, you know, you may have LSU at 40, 44 or 43 wins, and they could very well easily be the sixth-place team in the SEC – but they go off and win the national championship. So that's the – to me, that's the storyline with this league is I think anybody from that one to probably seven or eight can can win the national championship. I really do. You brought him up earlier, uh, new LSU pitching coach Nate Yeski. What does yeah. he bring to the table? And, and uh, what is the difference between uh, him and uh, the new coach at Georgia and, and it, two different guys, or is it just more uh, Jay having – a going from 1A to 1B or, or vice versa? Yeah, I do think they're a little different. Um, I, I'll say this about Nate. I think he's uh, – you know, he was our assistant coach of the year a few years ago. I think he's one of the premier minds in, in the game. For my money, one of the top two or three pitching coaches in college baseball has had chances to to go to the Mariners as their big league pitching coach in the past, has, you know, decided to stay in college baseball. But, you know, I, I think, you know, people are quick to look at last year at A&M and go, oh, yeah. You know he's 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 losing it, and and I disagree. I think it was one of those weird years where a couple of guys just didn't pan out, and you know because of it, the ERA suffered. But I mean, if you look at his track record, I mean, it was at I, I want to say at Oregon State, I want to say that he went like six straight years or something where the team ERA was like three five or under. I mean, it was something crazy like that. But I mean, the thing about him that's really interesting is I will say this: the the similarities between him and West. 
would be that I think they're both kind of in the weeds a little bit personality wise. And what I mean by that is you're not going to see Wes, you're not going to see Nate out there, you know, uh, yelling at people and uh, get, you know, get into the pitcher's face. Like, you, you know, you'll see from some pitching coaches around college baseball, like Scott Brown at Vanderbilt's kind of, you know, hard nosed in your face. They're very similar in that regard, but I think in the way they teach pitching is, is much different. I think Wes is one of those guys who, I mean, what his history, right, is velocity, fastball, things like that. That's not to say that Nate doesn't value that, but I think what he what he would likes to do, and it kind of goes back to Oregon State. If you remember, you know, I always bring up this guy to Oregon State, Bryce Femmel, uh, who is, you know, probably one of the most non-talented college pitchers to ever be elite. Uh, I mean, he was like like upper 80s, low 90s fastball. But what Nate did is he, you know, taught him a really good breaking ball and a really good changeup. Uh, and he ended up being an All-American as a guy throwing like 87, 89 uh, in the Pac-12. And so I think he's one of those guys that really wants you to establish the secondaries no matter how hard you throw. Like he wants you to do velocity, but he also wants you to be able to land those secondary pitches for strikes. Be- and, and that's imperative in the SEC because if you don't do that, if you cannot land your secondaries for strikes, uh, you will get hit around unless you're Paul Skeens. And even Paul Skeens, if, if all he could do last year was throw his fastball, he would eventually start getting hit. I mean, I think back to when they when they played AM in college station, and I think Paul threw like five or six straight fastballs. And I mean, it was like double, double, single. And then all of a sudden, Paul, like, he literally started laughing and then started throwing a secondary, and it was like game over. But that gives you an idea that, like, if you just throw fastballs, people are going to hit it. So secondary pitches are very important to Nate. Well, this uh, report uh, is brought to you by attorney Kenneth P. Haynes. And Let's go ahead and hear from Kenny. Kenny Haynes is a proud 1989 graduate of LSU Law School with a passion for justice. Kenny stands out as the only lawyer in the state, board certified in both appellate practice and family law. Drawing from 34 years of trial experience, Kenny has navigated the most complex aspects of real people's lives. If you need help in Northwest Louisiana with a family issue, legal issue, or a highly skilled trial attorney, call Kenny, 318-222-2100. And speaking of winning, Kenny would like to recognize our 2023 national champions and congratulate coaches Kim Mulkey and Jay Johnson. Go Tigers! Yeah, we thank Kenny for sponsoring this uh, segment each and every week. And there's no better attorney in North Louisiana. Give him a call. Of course, he's the official, unofficial attorney of TigerBait.com. Uh, Kendall, you know, looking at the early schedule, and there are a lot of unknowns there. To some teams to. Uh, to get uh, figure out things and so forth. When do you see looking at it? When is the first test? We know uh, what are we three weeks away from going to Houston and the Astros yeah. tournament, and, and of course they're going to get there early. By the way, I found out yesterday. Uh, when you look at that, um, uh, LSU on a Wednesday night plays Rice at Reckling Park, and then of course the Astro Foundation's Classic uh, starts on Friday with Texas, um, and they you know LSU plays two uh, evening games. Uh, Texas on the Friday night, UL Lafayette on, on the Saturday. But for that Wednesday game at Rice, LSU is actually going to arrive in Houston, I'm told, on Monday. So they're going to spend a lot of time in the Houston area. Um, I know you're not far from there. Maybe you can get a uh, – a- AKA, uh, not, a, 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 that'll be a recruiting trip. I guarantee you, Jay, and that staff's going to be all over the place around this city. Uh, looking yeah, but where are they going to practice that? That might be a good opportunity for uh, you to go uh, watch them practice. But um, – I know you're going to be covering that one with D1 baseball when you go to that tournament, by the way. Um, is it just you or y'all send a couple of guys because it's such a big deal? Yeah, so it'll be just me. But, you know, going back to your question earlier or just a second ago, uh, that will definitely be their first test is that weekend. I think if you look at Texas, uh, that opening game, they'll probably throw LeBaron Johnson, who if you anybody that watched the postseason last year, a uh, really talented right-handed pitcher, you know, up to 96, 97, this fastball, really good breaking stuff. That's going to be a challenge for him. I think you look at, uh, and I know you don't like me when I say this, but when you look at Louisiana uh, on Saturday, I think they're going to have a really good team too. Uh, I think Matt's going to have a very good team. They always have a good team. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, D- Kyle DeBarge at the middle is one of the best players in college baseball. Uh, they did lose some key pieces, but again, uh, I would expect uh, they'll probably, they're supposed to start a kid by the name of Jack Martinez uh, on Friday nights for him. But I have a feeling with his stuff, I bet you he shifts him to Saturday that weekend to face LSU. We'll see. <coughs> but at any rate, I think I think the Cajuns are a uh, are a, are a definite 
in the mix for the postseason kind of club. I would be shocked if they're not. Um, Texas State. Uh, what, yeah, what they'll they be have? in the mix too. I mean, honestly, not to turn this into a Sun Belt discussion. Honestly, the Sun Belt as a whole is going to be really solid this year. Like that's a league, Mike. That you know, a few years ago you could look at it and go, "Oh, maybe they should get two teams in." That's a league now that because of realignment with Southern Miss and Texas State schools like that. I mean, dude, that's a. I mean, that's a. You know, six team, six teams in the postseason mix kind of league now, and so yeah, they're good. Texas State off a solid club. Keep an eye on a kid by the name of Ryan Farber. Uh, he hit like five eighty in the fall, uh, and I know Stephen Trout's really excited about him. So yeah, that all all three of those games will be a test, and then you know after that you get a little bit of a step down for the next couple of weeks until you get in the conference play. Well, you obviously uh, have seen the way Jay operates, and certainly with a lot of new faces and. Yeah. Actually, I mean, look, you go through fall ball, you go through all the scrimmages leading up to the season, and then the lights come on. And, um, you know, he's he's still playing with lineups. I, I, you know, is this going to be a deal because of all the new faces? I, know, I mean, look, there's a there's a worry at first base. Um, you know, how, how much is he going to be still playing with the lineups by the time they get to that Houston tournament? Yeah, that, I'll, I'll be honest with you. That, in, that, that is the biggest question mark for me is first base because, uh, you know, it's, it's like a broken record at this point. I've mentioned it so many times. But the thing about LSU that I look at is if you go back and look at multiple games last year with Trey Morgan at first base, you know, Trey hit 330 with, with some power, and that's great. But if you go back and look at some of his games last year, like he literally was probably responsible for like six or seven wins last year. I would argue he was responsible for the win that, that carried LSU to the National Championship Series last year with that play that he made on the throw uh, to home against Wake Forest. And so, man, when you lose a guy like that, uh, especially a defensive special over at first base, it puts a lot of pressure on a guy like Barry Jones to go out there and, and be a good defender. I don't think they need him to be Trey. He's not going to be Trey. I can promise you that. But if they can get him to go out there and be a decent defender, I think they'll be just fine. But, yeah, losing, losing Trey is going to hurt, especially early on. I, I, I think that's the biggest thing LSU fans are going to have to get accustomed to is not having that vacuum cleaner over at first base. Well, it sounds like maybe he's, uh, you know, from folks who've been out and, and watched some of the scrimmage that Jared's been a little shaky there at times. Yeah. I think maybe it yeah. might just be a confidence factor, but more reps. Um, It'll take time. It'll take time. But, you know, the, the guy for me that I, I look at this team and that I'm most excited about, it's kind of funny to say this, but it's a freshman. And you mentioned him earlier, Jake Brown. Uh, but, uh, you know, fans are going to love this guy. Like, he, he has a great frame. Uh, he ha he makes really hard contact. He runs like a deer. Uh, you know, when the, the scrimmage I was at in the fall, he hit a ball into the corner, and I'm not even kidding. Like, it felt like I looked down, I looked up, and he's already at third base. Like, he is a blazer. And what's really interesting about him, and I, and I don't think LSU is going to use him in this role uh, this year, or if they do, it's going to be very limited. But what's really interesting about Jake is um, talking to some scouts um, a few weeks ago, they're like, hey, do you, did you see him on the mound? I said, no. I, you know, the day I was there, he was not on the mound. He was just a position player. They're like, oh, well, he's going to end up being a better pitcher than he is a position player. And, th and that makes me think, like, man, if he's a better pitcher than a position player, he must be pretty dang good. So, uh, you know, keep an eye on that. We'll follow that name away, too, because I, I think you could see him maybe get some innings in the midweek because, again, it sounds like he is a really, really good left-handed pitcher. All right. Uh, anything you want to add on the way out uh, to look for, or, or, or concerns, or, 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 or guys that um, maybe just uh, through your phone calls that you think uh, be on the lookout for that maybe people aren't uh, talking about a whole lot? Yeah, real quick. I mean, to me, you know, I think LSU feels like Michael Braswell is going to take a big step forward offensively. I think that's obviously a big key this year. Um, you know, I, I I was more of a JT fan than a lot of people. Uh, I get that he made some mistakes defensively, but I thought he was clutch. Uh, he he provided power. Very clutch at the end. Oh, no doubt, man. Like he was he was a a program baseball rat. So I really liked him because of that. So I think they're going to expect Braswell to be better. Uh, and the other thing for me that I kind of circle is is a big key for this team is just having Malazzo and Tr Hayden Travinsky back. Uh, when you look at teams that compete for the national championship, the common denominator is always having a really good catching situation, uh, and they might just have the best catching situation in the country. And I think Brady Malazzo, Neal and Brady, Brady Neal. Neal yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, that that kind of go. you know, I think that's what you were kind of alluding to a minute ago with, you know, he's going to tinker with positions because when you have Malazzo, Travinsky, Brady Neal, 
Like, that's a lot of talent, man, if, you know, one of those guys is on the bench. So it could be one of those situations where Brady Neal could even play second. Like Jay mentioned that to me in the fall, that he could even go to second base if he needs to. Uh, he is – Brady Neal is super. Of course, he got hurt last year, and, and that set yeah. him back. But uh, um, And we, we love having him for interviews. But, uh, all right, Kendall, uh, tell everybody they need to go to D1 Baseball. Uh, thanks. Uh, looking forward to the, each week. Uh, we were wanting to do them early, but this is the first weekend of college baseball, and you can imagine how busy Kendall's been. So we're yeah, doing it on Thursday, and it, and it worked out well because we got we had Jay uh, Wednesday afternoon, and so that way, if we would have done it, and we would have said some things that he clarified later in the day, that uh, we it was better that we were were late this week. But uh, Kendall, talk about D one baseball. Why yeah, they man. need to go subscribe? There's nobody better in the business. It, it's I've been knowing Kendall for 20 years, and uh, it's I'm, I'm proud of the guy because what he and his superior staff had built there. There's there, there's nobody that comes close to their coverage. No, I appreciate it, man. You know, yeah, just go to D1Baseball.com. You can actually put in the code 24SEASON. I think we'll run it through the about Wednesday of next week. Put in the code 24SEASON. I'll give you 24% off of an annual. Obviously, we'll have a ton of LSU coverage this year, um, starting with the Houston weekend here in a couple of weeks. So should be exciting. Go, all, it, go ahead. Go ahead. They need to go to your YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button, the notification bell. Yeah, that would be beneficial. Of- I know you're. I know you're on my case about that one. So, <laughs> look, they put out great content, and there's and and they they do a lot of live shows, and um, people need to need to find it because they're, they're sharing a ton of information on the D1 Baseball YouTube channel. Go hit the subscribe button and notification bell there. No, I all good, it, Mike. Yes, sir. We'll have a all good right, one. man. Good luck to the Tigers this weekend. All right. Talk to you next week. See ya.